people watching, there's people watching Secret Santa. Are you gifted? People watching, people watching secret cameras. They keep the distance. When you tried, did it make the difference? We've been so dramatic. People watching, they're like, why you laughing? I'm like, why you trying? They're like, stop asking. I let a whole lot pass me. When you tried, was it everlasting? Was it ever answered? The last thing that you ever asked me. People watching, I watch the people pass me. The people, persons I don't get along with have the nerve to ask me. Are you sure about this? Please don't worry about this. If you don't hurry, you will never catch me. I said if you love me and you want me to stay, you just gotta give me the time of the day. You can always tell me how you want it to be. I just have a feeling about a couple of things. She told me that the pleasure in the secret you make is dealing with depression in a meaningful way. She came to the show and I practically beamed. She was dancing and laughing at me. I write songs everywhere I go, everywhere I land. I don't have a band, I don't need a band. I wrote songs in Japan on my grandma's baby grand. She was dancing, clapping her hands. And what do you do if the mirror is looking at you funny? Massachusetts maple syrup, you sweeter than honey. The sunny side of the street is 200 degrees in the summer. Uh. And I bet everything I have on it, I put a little ramitaz on it. I'm only sad when I'm mad, honest. But falling out will put you back on it. Hey, I said put a little back in it. I make bad decisions, I make them all the time We have inner demons, that's a hell of a find They say a dirty kitchen is some kind of a sign 20-something vision with my eyes in my mind I said if you love me and you want me to stay You just gotta give me the time of the day You just gotta tell me how you want it to be But I just got a feeling about a couple of things Time froze, but kept count, I wasn't watching I'm doing this my whole life, I almost let it stop me
TN alone Finish and final made it home You leave a message at the tone Beautiful balance space to be in I didn't miss it and I mean it I know when I'll be friend of mine It loves I told you so and fine Beautiful stupid imperfection Section I know we'll catch up at the next one Next intersection How are you gonna do it? Jill Hopkins from Vocalo Radio, live here with you and Sen Morimoto, uh, your new favorite. Uh, first of all, thank you all for joining us. 
and get your questions ready to join my questions on Facebook and YouTube. Put them in the comments, just sprinkle them on in. Uh, here's what you're gonna get today. You're gonna get this guy, wait, nope, he's over there. <laughs> there he is, it's Sen Morimoto, multi-artist, recording artist from uh, Super Records right here in Chicago. Uh, we're going to uh, have a chit chat. You're gonna hear uh, some performances from his space and uh, we'll take all of your questions. So uh, without further ado, let's get into it. Uh, Sen, hello, 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 my friend. How are you? Hi. Hi, Joe. Hi, everyone out there. I'm doing all right. How are you today? I'm good. Where am I talking to you from? I'm in the living room of my uh, new apartment with Kaina. And um, yeah, we just are figuring out how to live stream things, honestly. So every time we like find a new spot in the house and we're like, does this work? Or, you know, are you, you have a beautiful setup over there. Is that like the interview room? This is a, uh, I don't, I guess it is now. I haven't, made it a practice to do in this room yet but i think i like it for this yeah this is the the conversation nook nice yeah <laughs> uh the last time i think you and i were in the same room obviously a long time ago but uh i think we were talking about uh cannonball the release of of cannonball your your i guess second most recent album what was the rest of that uh, album cycle like for you? You look like you're having a great time out there, and it was an, an amazing record. Thank you. Yeah, um, it was life changing. Honestly, I that was the first record I put out um, on a label, which was our own label, Super, with with good friends Namdi and Glenn, and um, that opened up touring basically for me. Was the big change, and so I spent the next couple years traveling all over the country and. A couple times to Japan, uh, where I was born, <clears throat> got to play some shows back home. So, yeah, it's just taken me all over, and, and that was really eye-opening and fun experience for me. I'm really glad you got to do that before we weren't allowed to do that anymore. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it, we were full speed in tour mode, and then everything got canceled. And at first, it was like super shocking and sad. And then for a moment, I was like, oh, maybe this is actually really good for us to slow down a little and then of course now it's like oh shit i mean i don't even know if i could swear but <laughs> i think there's no rules on the internet i don't know right. I don't we're swear. in <laughs> <laughs> yeah well i was like oh now i'm like oh shit <laughs> <For real. laughs> but, i mean honestly we we did have to force ourselves to slow down and i think now that we're you know the better part of a year into this whole thing uh you know, besides the fact that, you know, the, the mega problems, the, 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 the super problems of the world, I'm finding, are you finding that like chilling out for a while is really helping you create or were you having a hard time with it like earlier in the pandemic? Um, at first, I don't, I wouldn't say I was having a hard time at first, but I don't think I really like took it as a, I took advantage of that time at first. We definitely spent some time just like bumming around after, you know, a year straight of touring and and not being home we we definitely just like played video games for a while but um but it definitely then did open up a lot of just time to reflect and plan a little better about like how i wanted to be and we wanted to be releasing music making music spending our time and energy because a lot of that stuff uh is like a lot of work for not a lot of payoff or even like satisfaction just personally even outside of like making money to survive or something but just like yeah figuring out how we can use our skills and our and our plan to make the best situation for everybody you know i mean i'm as as i'm going through uh the materials for the new album and the new album itself uh i i think that the payoff here is that everything feels as though it was made with great care that you were able to take the time that it deserved and uh, how how did you uh how did you get to hunker down and, and and do that and make sure that that came across and the not just the music but the visuals as well i think um mainly i mean honestly it's always pretty rushed we're pretty last minute about a lot of things but it always ends up feeling complete and you know, uh, the best it can be, I think, just because of the team, really. And it's all just friends and family. 
Um, that was another thing that we learned or I kind of reverted to because of COVID was I had finished the album and I was getting ready to, you know, make videos and figure out how I was going to put this whole thing out. And it was kind of like, oh, well, this is the next album. I should probably like, you know, go full out or hire some fancy, you know, videographer people or something like that. And then of course, like we were in lockdown and we weren't going to go be with a whole film crew. So it ended up being back to how we always did it, you know, just with our friends, close knit group of people doing what we could with the, you know, things that we had available to us. And it ended up better than I could have even imagined it. So really, yeah, it is just like, we make it work because we work as a team. Well, let's hear some music from the new album. Uh, where did you get to record? Is there a piano in your house? <laughs> yeah. Um, Kaina found a piano on, I think, Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist or something. And uh, it was free. We just had to hire some movers. So not free. It was free. <laughs> um, hire some movers to bring the piano over, which is super exciting. I um, had a piano at my first apartment in Chicago that was just in the loft when I moved into it. But it was always a huge problem. Our neighbors were like super crazy people and they were always yelling at us through the walls if I touch the piano for a second. So it's really nice to be at home and be able to play piano, just sit down whenever and also record little performances there. It, well, uh, I don't want to keep the music from the people. Uh, everyone, here's Sen Morimoto. Hey Chicago, I'm Sen Morimoto. Stoked to be here playing some songs for you off my new self-titled album out on Super Records on October 23rd. And um, yeah, I'm just going to get started. This first one's called Goosebumps. Thank you for having me, Vocalo. Thank you. 
This next one's called Wolf. <laughs> Hi everyone, uh, that was San Moromoto, it was Wolf, and before that you heard Goosebumps. I'm Jill Hopkins, if you're just joining us, thank you for doing so. Get in those Facebook comments, get in those YouTube comments, and throw your questions at your new favorite, San Moromoto. I think Wolf is my favorite. Wow, okay. <laughs> I uh, the, the video for it is especially fun. Oh yeah, that Talk was super fun. Talk to me about working with the uh, the Night Trash folks. Uh, they're super cool. I met them through Glenn um, at the label, who is buddies with the, with those guys, and um, that was the first time I'd worked with them. And it was pretty soon into lockdown, um, and so we were kind of in new territory, figuring out how to make everything super safe, like masks and gloves and uh, outdoor space and little wipes on the doorknobs and all the stuff, you know, it was pretty intense, but um, super fun. We got to hang with Charlie, who is Kaina's folks dog, who uh, is a good friend of mine. <laughs> and, um, yeah, it was, it was a blast. We've, we've gotten to talk about Kaina a lot here so far. You, you guys are, your uh, friendship makes me happy. And your creative relationship makes me happy. Uh, when you decide to work together with a friend as much as you do uh, with Kaina, uh, does it ever get kind of squirrely? Do do think does the creative run over? Does the the personal run over into the creative, and vice versa? Yeah, for sure. I mean, not I wouldn't say squirrely, but I feel like in most of my collaborations with people um 
they are people who generally I, I mainly only work with people that are close in my life anyway. So I think part of what makes the collaboration strong is an understanding for each other, which comes with, you know, the highs and lows of all relationships. <laughs> but no, for the most part, it's pretty smooth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, there was once like a job opening at my husband's old job and I needed work and he was like, you can come work with me. And then we quickly both decided that would be a terrible idea. <laughs> so I admire when people <laughs> can yeah. do those things and not compromise either uh, set of circumstances. Good for, for y'all. Sure. Yeah. Uh, when uh, when uh, you were filmed, the audio tree uh, version of Goosebumps, the first song we just heard, uh, made me want to go outside. What was that kind of botanical adventure like for you? Oh, it was super fun. Um, I've always wanted to do a far out. I think it's like one of my favorite uh, like performance video formats because they always just find cool spots. Ever since I saw Namdi's. They played in like a in like a bodega somewhere, and I just thought that was so cool. Um, and so I was super stoked when they hit me up to do that. And it was really nice to be able to do something around some plants with some open air too, because obviously everything is still very kind of vague and up in the air about COVID safety. And so everyone's just hyper paranoid in a good way, probably. But um, so it's nice to be able to do something somewhat distanced. Let's talk about Namdi and talk about Super Records. Uh, congratulations for, you know, starting a record label. People talk about it all the time and then don't actually do it. So <laughs> way to see a plan through. Uh, how, how, did, how, what do you want the ethos of Super Records to be? How, how do you separate yourself from, you know, the evil that the music industry can be? Oh, yeah. Um... That's a brutal question. It's evil. It's just all evil. <laughs> but we're, um, I mean, we're just pretty small at this point. We're just some friends putting out some music. So at, at, at the level we're at, it's pretty easy to be direct about, um, you know, with each other about what needs to happen to make this not just um, a repeated error in, you know, the history of many labels that just, um, you know, screw people out of money or opportunity and stuff. Um, so really, I mean, for us, it's just about putting the music out. And, and, and at this point, you know, we don't, you know, we don't get paid ourselves from this label. It is very much still a passion project. Like all the money that we make is for, um, the royalties for the artists that we release music for. Um, and so, uh, I don't know. I think <laughs> hopefully things, uh, you know, grow and there's uh, an opportunity for evil to come up so that we can, you know, <laughs> push it out of the way. I think like we're not even at a place where it could be that evil, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> but it's definitely, yeah, it's something that we really care about, you know, like just uh, as, our, as artist friendly as it can be um, for us. And we're always in conversation about that with each other, about what we can do for every artist to make sure that they feel that what's happening is on their terms, mainly. Yeah. Who's on the roster of Super Records? There's been a lot of bands. Uh, Super started um, as a small tape label. So, you know, throughout the DIY community in Chicago, mostly I think indie, indie bands starting out was, um, countless artists but um the last few have been um monumental for us as we've been able to give like a larger push and and really try to get these voices out um the last one was mine <laughs> and, um, the record we did before mine was Kainas, um which was another huge record for us it was like yeah such an incredible project to be involved with and everyone works so hard together as a unit and Kaina worked so hard leading that that um yeah that really changed a lot of things for us as a label too um and then uh actually I'm sorry I skipped over Namdi's Namdi put out Brat this year which feels crazy because um he also put out like five other records 
since <laughs> um, and uh, we're in the middle of releasing, uh, we're in the rollout for newest artist Luke Titus, who is new to Super, but not new to Chicago music. He's kind of a legend in, in, um, in a lot of Chicago hip hop and, and R&B music that he's produced and been in bands for. And we're super stoked to get his solo music out into the world. Yeah, this is a, it's an exciting time to be kind of in charge of what people get to hear because we have time now to listen in, in, in ways that we didn't. So thanks yeah. for all the, the output. Uh, when you are looking for an artist that would make a good match for the label, what are you looking for? We, we send each other a lot of music. I think generally it's just if something sticks out in a way that we haven't heard before, that is really the most exciting thing to us. And, and music that we can tell a lot of care has been put into, um, you know, you listen to a project and you can just tell someone has put their soul into it, their time, their, their, they've mapped it all out. And we look for artists that are intentional about their work. Um, but it's not really any kind of like genre specific thing. And in fact, we actually really also appreciate finding artists who work outside of kind of general genre confinements, you know? Um, Don't put any boxes around yourself. Don't do that. Okay, yeah. And I mean, even, it, and it's, you know, at a time like this, it's so many artists that are breaking those boundaries now too. That it's, it's almost, I feel like probably harder to find a straight ahead artist of one genre maybe. Um, so yeah, mainly just intention, care. As a person, we like to be on the same page about the world and stuff generally. <laughs> well, I want to play uh, the people some more of your music. Uh, everybody, mm -hmm. you're just joining us. I'm Jill Hopkins from Vocal Radio. That's Sun More Motor. I keep pointing the wrong direction. That's where you I'm, are. I'm trying to get the mirror down. <laughs> <laughs> For Sen Morimoto, a super records recording artist, uh, if you've got some questions, leave them in the Facebook comments. We've got some that we're going to come back to after this break. Full of music. Sen Morimoto. This one's called Save. Die. For change. called Jupiter. Light. 
Life's like this, it goes and pass you by. I remember less and less of home. My past, my pride, my problems pacified. Old famous faces melt with no. All time with less and less to show. Nothing tests me anymore. Hardly high and less and lows. I say the song at six years old. I didn't know yet what it meant. How did it go? Say softly to myself in bed. How did it go? Every boy I knew. Please, won't you ask for it? I put my keys and my feet on the dash. Hundred degrees, measure speed with the spirit. No my shit hot, I don't need you to hear it. I must have spent my whole life trying to remember what you said. How did it go? Thanks so much for having me. Much love to you all. Hope you're well out there. I'm Sen Morimoto. See you again soon. You'll see him again right now. There he is. I'm back. <laughs> Couldn't stay away. Uh, let's talk about that nostalgia bomb that is Jupiter and its accompanying video. Uh, I really do envy you youngins you have access to so many photographs from your youth right there all, they're all they all live in the box that we're talking to each other on right now for better or worse it's all there <laughs> well the first comment under the youtube video says so what you're saying is you've always been cute and you were adorable and so <laughs> <laughs> what's it like to get to have an excuse to just kind of walk down memory lane and share all that stuff with us it's great it's so funny uh, it's another covid situation actually because we i wanted to make a video with my brother yuya who um who's been making short films forever and uh he's always had uh since i was little had me you know star in his little his in his films that he was working on um and since we weren't able to connect because of covid um he came up with this idea to kind of compile all of the footage he'd taken since you know i was 10 or younger or something 
um, into this video and it was super fun to see what he came up with. Um, and just, yeah, a trip to see, to see it actually. <laughs> I mean, he could have been very vengeful about it. He picked the good one. Oh yeah, he could have been cruel. He could have been downright cruel with it, <laughs> luckily. Luckily he spared me some <laughs> brutal, brutal moments. <laughs> I, yeah, no, just trust me. I'm uh, every day, every day grateful that YouTube did not exist when I was in middle school. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's there forever. <laughs> forever. Hey, we've got a question from the internet. Facebook, uh, Facebook questions are not just welcome, they are encouraged. If you've got one for send, you let us know. Pulsar asks, how would you get hooked up with Reservoir? And are there any more plans to collaborate? Yeah, um, Reservoir, I went to work on a track with Will of Reservoir when he was working on the record. Um, we've known each other through various Chicago music shows and, and collaborations and stuff. Um, so I went over to his house with my horn and did some vocals and recorded some saxophone. And I thought that was it really. It was just like a feature thing on, on his project. And then once, uh, once the band started performing live, uh, they asked me to sit in a couple times because their sax player couldn't make it. And then, uh, yeah. And now whenever we're, our schedules align, I like to play with them. It's, it's like, the most uh some of the most engaging music i get to play yeah i think it's uh fantastic that despite social distancing and the pandemic and everything like that that we live in a time where the technology enables us to collaborate one way or another how are you scratching that collaboration itch in a time where you can't you know play an album release show at a club or go out on tour totally um a few things i at the beginning of quarantine um i feel like yeah a lot of us were missing that collaborative satisfaction that we we couldn't get anymore so um i started doing uh some online like uh zoom cypher and beat production um kind of prompts with the pivot gang boys and um that was super fun. Just nothing to release music or anything like that. Just as an exercise, really, we would just kind of work on instrumentals or or write write lyrics. And so little things like that, finding out how to collaborate over Zoom with people um, or, or just sending things back and forth has been uh, super helpful in that regard. Uh, we got some shout outs for people in the comments. People are watching from literally all over the world, Zen. Uh, Michelle is in the Bay Area. Connor is uh, here in the city and Patty Sue's on the South Side. Ruben from Skokie says, you sound great. But Rena says, hello from Brazil. And that's exciting. Wow, hello Brazil. <laughs> Uh, this uh, the globalization that uh, we're allowed to have uh, doing things like this that we wouldn't normally get to do is, is one silver lining in a very strange time. What's one of the more interesting virtually virtual things that you've gotten to do? Um, virtual things I've gotten to do. I don't even know. I, um, <laughs> I was just looking up, um, Shibuya in Japan. There's a intersection in Shibuya. That's a, gets like packed out on Halloween every year. I mean, it's always packed because it's Tokyo, but on Halloween, it gets like super hectic. And we were there last year um, and walked through it and it was pretty crazy. And and so we were looking at, my brother was telling me that this year they're doing a virtual Shibuya Halloween and I kind of wanted to check it out, but I, have, I haven't been able to download the app, honestly. <laughs> There's some technical difficulties, but <clears throat> That's something fun I'm looking forward to figuring out, just like little things like that. But for my own stuff, um, really it's just the release show was the biggest thing really kind of, uh, we did that two days ago now at Lincoln Hall um, with Audio Tree, And yeah, it was the closest I've come to feeling like I was playing a show, you know, and that felt pretty special to be there with my friends. 
how is that? How is playing? I mean, if, if for folks who don't know, Lincoln Hall's it's a good sized room. There's a balcony, you know, it's it's uh it's it's big without feeling too big, but it feels cavernous when it's empty. Oh yeah, it's like a, like a four hundred cap, something like that. Generally, you'd be playing to a good amount of people, yeah, all around you. Um, and just being in there alone, I thought it was going to be way more uncomfortable than it actually was. Um, we were talking about how generally you get a certain energy from the audience when you're performing, um, especially like a show at the end of working on an album or something really kind of like emotionally exhausting and, and physically exhausting like that, that you get this kind of special energy when you finally perform it. But since there was nobody there, it was something we had to draw out of each other just on stage together. And and we definitely got to a point where it did, it started to feel, you know, almost like there were people there because we were really pulling that energy out of each other. And then I looked out into the crowd and it's empty. <laughs> and you're like, oh, this is like really peculiar feeling. Like I feel the, it's almost like the high of, of doing that performance and then the reality in front of you. <laughs> Contrast, but but it was really special, yeah, to be there with friends. Uh, Connor on Facebook asks, what does your songwriting and recording process look like when you are on tour? How do you move and create at the same time? On tour, I just try to keep track of snippets because I never have time to make a whole song or write a whole, you know, set of lyrics. I just, I try to be as organized as I can be about, um, you know, if I have some musical idea, like a, the beginning of a beat comes together, um, keeping those in a folder and always, always thinking of lyrics, just walking around. And I always try to write those down. Uh, and then, you know, later maybe you look through them and they're terrible, but at least you have one, so. It's, it's, I mean, it's difficult. You're on tour, I guess your number one job is to play the shows and, you know, move people's bodies and souls. Your second job is to keep yourself alive and, you know, not give in to all the trappings of touring. But yeah, sometimes creation does fall further down the, uh, down the priority list than you'd probably oh, yeah. prefer it to. It's a whole other mindset entirely. Yeah. Even like, I save those snippets of stuff, but it's a long time before I get into a place where I can actually, you know, compile that into a, into a full song or a full project. So, so what do you do now with that you aren't touring? What's, what's this post release life look like for you right now? Honestly, I have no idea. We're figuring it out day by day. <laughs> Normally, yeah, this would be touring time. It would be preparation for touring time. And that would be what I would do for the next, you know, few years, probably. So that void makes room for some unknown project or or something. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're trying to be creative about it. Um, so, I mean, even just doing the release show streamed on... Uh, live from Lincoln Hall, or just figuring out fun things we can do to engage with people that are interested in the record um, post-release, because I can't be going around playing the shows, so, you know, pop up, stuff like that. We're trying to think of things. No. Yeah. Well, on the, the plus side, you live with a, a great musician, a great collaborator, and uh, none of y'all are going anywhere, so, you know, oh, this yeah. This could be the time for the collaboration album that we've all been clamoring for this entire time. I like to think that pretty much all of what both of us do is collaborative anyways. Yeah. <laughs> we've made, now we have three collaborative albums already, basically. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, we're definitely going to hunker down and get to some recording, hopefully get our space set up. So that's exciting. That is exciting. I'm excited for you. I'm excited that this album is, is here for everyone here. You should just feel so incredibly proud of yourself. This is a great album. It really, really is. Thank you. Yeah, we can't get enough of it here at the house. The videos are fantastic. Uh, and I, I hope that everybody gets to hear it. I want to uh, take this time to uh, say hello to Dustin from Indiana, who says hello to you, and to thank everybody for tuning in, for asking questions, and for spending a Monday night with us when you could be doing, I don't know, like three or four other different things. <laughs> <laughs> right. What are you doing? <laughs> no, seriously. 
<laughs> yeah, that's, of course, it's right. your best option. <laughs> uh, we, uh, of course, want to thank the, the team at Super Records. Thank you to Glenn for, for helping us set this whole thing up. Uh, here's where you can go and get Sen Morimoto's self-titled new album and all of Sen Morimoto's work. You can go to super, that's S-O-O-P-E-R records.com. Uh, you can just listen to Vocalo. You're going to hear it. I promise you if I have anything to say about it. And I do. <laughs> <laughs> You can visit uh, San Morimoto's uh, website, link tree slash San Morimoto, or follow him at San underscore Morimoto on Insta. Uh, we want to know what you all thought about all of this. So keep the comments coming. Keep the feedback coming. We want to do more of these. Uh, so uh, if you've got someone that you think we should sit down and talk to, let us know at vocalo.org. And you can catch me tomorrow morning on the morning amp uh, until we move to week, the two uh, afternoons. Did you know, Sen? No. What? Next time you uh, get to come to the radio station to talk to me, you don't have to wake up. It's the crack of dawn. You can uh, come visit at a regular person's time of day. How artist friendly of you. I know. That, that's why we're doing it. Uh, yeah, the, uh, the show is moving to 1 to 5 p.m. So that's exciting for all of us. Uh, I, I know you sat down with our digital engagement guru, Seamus Doheny, for a 20 in 2 conversation. And we loved it so much. Thank you for uh, being the inaugural guest on uh, both of these uh, platforms. We appreciate oh, you. It was a blast both times. Y'all are the best. Ah, thanks. I want to thank uh, everybody who uh, put this show together on the technical side. Min Chente, there's Marquita, Marquita Wiggins, Sarah Balama, and uh, everybody at Chicago Public Media. I miss y'all. Uh, but we're going to play you Sends 20 and 2, and uh, our next one is going to be with uh, Knox Fortune. So that's exciting for us. Nice. <laughs> all right, Sen, uh, on behalf of all of us at Vocalo, thank you and, and uh, good luck with everything. I'll see you out here in the real world again soon. I, I, I think we get to do that again one day. Thank you so much, Joel. You're the best. Bye, everybody. Thank hey, you. I'm Seamus from Vocalo, and this is 20 and 2 with Sen Morimoto. I'm Sen Morimoto. Just want to let you know that I have a release show coming up. Describe your music in three words or less. Oh, um, yeah, um, three words, I guess. And... Oh. Who's your favorite Chicago artist? Sen Morimoto. Who's your favorite Japanese artist? Sen Morimoto. Oh. What language do you dream in? English. What's the last beverage you drank? Water. You know, we don't really drink nearly enough water a day. Right. Last thing you ate? Three empanadas, two arepas, one baked potato, and half a rotisserie chicken. Do you have any allergies? Cats. Who is the best songwriter alive? Sen Morimoto. What are you most afraid of? I hate the idea of anyone thinking I'm self-obsessed. Yeah, we'll have to. What word or phrase do you overuse the most? Uh. What's your biggest regret? My what? Biggest regret. When do you lie? One more time. Excuse me. When do you lie? Wait. Sen? Look, I really just came here to say a few things about the show and I just, oh. Hello. Okay. What do you think is the most overrated quality? 4K resolution. What's one thing that you would change about Chicago? The police. What's one of the most important qualities in a friend? Trust. In 50 years, what will people be nostalgic for? A climate that can sustain life on Earth. What's the worst gift you've ever received? Name one thing you're unreasonably afraid of. Sometimes I fear God will punish me for overpricing my merch. Which fictional character would you most like to date? God. No, wait. Name one misconception that people have about you. Sometimes people call me Sean. Or Sam, or something like that. <laughs> ah. Ah. Thanks for sitting down with us, Sen. This has been 20 and 2 with Vocalo. Watching this.
gifted people watching Secret Santa. Are you gifted people watching people watching secret cameras? They keep the distance. When you tried, did it make the difference? We've been so dramatic. People watching, they're like, why you laughing? I'm like, why you trying? They're like, stop asking. I let a whole lot pass me. When you tried, was it everlasting? Was it ever answered? The last thing that you ever asked me. People watching, I watch the people pass me. The people, persons I don't get along with have the nerve to ask me. Are you sure about this? Please don't worry about this. If you don't hurry, you won't never catch me. I said, if you love me and you want me to stay, you just gotta give me the time of the day. You can always tell me how you want it to be. I just have a feeling about a couple of things. She told me that the pleasure in the secret you make is dealing with depression in a meaningful way. She came to the show and I practically beamed. She was dancing and laughing at me. I write songs everywhere I go, everywhere I land. I don't have a band, I don't need a band. I wrote songs in Japan on my grandma's baby grand. She was dancing, clapping her hands. And what do you do if the mirror is looking at you funny? Massachusetts maple syrup, you sweeter than honey. The sunny side of the street is 200 degrees in the summer. Uh. And I bet everything I have on it, I put a little ramitaz on it. I'm only sad when I'm mad, honest.